friends i hope i'm audible and visible can you all give me a quick thumbs up if my audio video is fine and let me just check if you all can hear me and if my audio video is fine all of you so we have a very interesting session today and that is on the uh, genodermatosis the question which we can expect a lot in uh, the entrance examination whether it is neat pg ins et or fmg so let me very very quickly go through the today's uh, session can you all give me a quick thumbs up if you can see me i hope my audio video is all fine and amazing amazing i think now on my video is uh, yes visible it is visible to all of you good so welcome all of you uh, let's uh, start with the today's session so please remember that uh, uh, i'm dr cheshta garwal your neat pj educator on the best online platform that is an academy because i wanted to tell all of you that uh, as the republic day is approaching that is on 26th of january we are giving a 6 month free subscription if you buy one year and longer this is an amazing offer for all my dear students please remember this the republic day celebration that is on january 25th 26th and 27th if you use my code that is c h e s t a 10 you will get one, one month one year of an academy plus subscription with 10% discount as well as you'll get 6 month extra for free so requesting all of you to please subscribe an academy congratulations to the learner who have cleared the recent fmg exam this is the free test calendar for the month of the january and this is for the month of this is the paid classes again you have to use the same code my name that is c h e s t a 10 to unlock this free session we also have plus subscription which give you an access to live and recorded session from the top educators and iconic give you an access to both an academy and prep ladder together now uh, the special class features the special class features these are the free live sessions which can you which you can easily download and you can answer the question ma'am daily quiz not happening uh, shrishti on sunday i do not take any daily quiz so uh, it's only on the weekdays and today because my i was not feeling very well and that is why i have not conducted the test very very sorry for that so the saturday's test uh, we will be discussing uh, tomorrow in our 4:30 pm session and from tomorrow onwards we will again continue with the free live quizzes on the an academy live platform we have a highly effective question bank of 25000 plus question we have a feature which is known as raise a hand feature then we have a lot of new batches which is about to get start that is focus fmg and target neat pg mcq revision batch this is something which is very very important for all my dear students and for this particular subscription we are giving a two month an academy subscription worth rupees 6750 you need to take the referral code cheshta10 and get your an academy subscription today i request all of you uh, to please use this code and get your subscription today itself because it's a very uh, limited time period offer and as we have discussed just now on republic day if you take a one year subscription or any longer subscription you will get 6 month for free so requesting all of you to please uh, take care of it let's begin with the today's session uh, thank you all of you i'll definitely try my best so actually i was having a lot of fever and so throat and um, was not able to take the class in the afternoon as well but i somehow managed to take a class but definitely from tomorrow i hope i will feel good and i'll start the live courses again so today we have a class on genodermatosis which includes the ichthyosiform disorders as well as the congenital or the genetic disorders like neurofibromatosis then we have tuberous sclerosis etc a very nice combat uh, and i hope everyone have uh, given the neat pg combat i hope your score was good and the clinical descriptions of dermatology questions you must have liked okay so we have i think around six questions in the neat pg combat which was there on sunday and i hope everybody have enjoyed this now here uh, the correct answer of this question is option number 1 ichthyosis vulgaris now what is ichthyosis it is a condition where the process of keratinization is defective so it is a keratinization disorder it is a keratinization defect very very important why what is the problem here there is a retention of the epidermis i hope everybody knows that there is an epidermal turnover time in which the new cells are formed and the stratum corneum will peel off but sometimes they keep on retaining on the surface of the skin giving rise to ichthyotic vulgaris or ichthyosiform scales which are fish like scales 
can anybody tell me what are the two most commonly seen or most frequently asked questions from this particular chapter anybody who have done the uh, the thalassiform disorders uh, before so two things which they will ask you for sure is <coughs> the autosomal dominant uh, or autosomal dominant type which is ichthyosis vulgaris and x link recessive type now please remember these differences this is very important in ichthyosis vulgaris we have flagrant defect the scales are small with sparing of flexure and we see associated atopic dermatitis but we have absence of granular layer in ichthyosiform disorder that is ichthyosis vulgaris in next link we have steroid surfactant deficiency we have large black scale present in the whole body and there is flexural sparing in uh, or ichthyosis vulgaris but here there is no flexural sparing then we have cryptorchidism corneal opacity and hypergranulosis which is associated okay so uh, this is the clinical image you can see in ichthyosis vulgaris we have light colored scales and if you examine the flexures they will be spared but in x link we you, you see dark colored scales so there will be no sparing can you see here the flexures are involved no sparing and when you examine the patient you can see corneal opacity and you will see what the next very important feature is you will see the cryptorchidism now which of the following are the features of ichthyosis vulgaris except anyone can tell me the answer here so which of the following feature is not seen in ichthyosis vulgaris anyone i am waiting for your answers autosomal dominant flagrant protein is targeted absent granular layer or flexures are always involved oh, very nice so very nice shrishti what about you combat healer what about pancake <clears throat> okay fine so let's start with this session and the answer of this question is option number 4 we have just now discussed that ichthyosis vulgaris the flexures are spared while in x link ichthyosis you see involvement so the only incorrect statement is option number 4 rest all three is correct okay ji chalo good very nice next question a male patient with cryptorchidism presented with large dirty brown scales on the body flexures the skin biopsy shows hypergranulosis steroid surfactant deficiency what will be the most probable diagnosis ichthyosis vulgaris lamellar ichthyosis x linked recessive ichthyosis or non bullous ichthyosiform erythroderm anyone can tell me the answer very nice shrishti anyone else pancake dr priya a child with cryptorchidism dirty brown scales on the flexures and skin biopsy shows hypergranulosis and steroid surfactant deficiency yes this is a classical description of x link ichthyosis where you have steroid surfactant deficiency cryptorchidism and corneal opacity and you have hypergranulosis okay so i think this question is clear now another question is a very interesting one and it is on your screen i hope you can appreciate the image a new net presents with the following condition what is the incorrect statement regarding the diagnosis marzina combat pancake dr priya shrishti uh, anyone i request all of you to please attend these sessions they are very helpful and uh, like if you definitely if you are not feeling like studying on your own these live classes will be a lot beneficial because instead of wasting the time on some you know like some stupid stuff uh like watching some uh, you know some series and something i think this is the best way to spend your time okay ji amazing so the correct answer of this question is option number 1 can anybody tell me what is that one thing which is visible in this image what is that one thing which you can appreciate in this image dr priya shrishti marzina anything which you can appreciate in this image a very thin shiny glistening taut membrane there is fissures which you can see around the mouth even around the joints <coughs> <coughs> this is colloidal membrane <coughs> now colloidal membrane <coughs> is a very classical feature of lamellar ichthyosis 
okay now what happens in a patient of lamellar ichthyosis you have deficiency of transglutaminase enzyme this tri transglutaminase enzyme it is temperature sensitive enzyme so why it is called as bathing suit ichthyosis because uh, when the patient take bath the uh, temperature of the <clears throat> the exposed part decreases while the core body temperature increases so when there is increase in the core temperature where you have the bathing suit the transglutaminase activity reduce giving rise to formation of the uh, lamellar type of scale so everything is correct except option number 1 because in lamellar ichthyosis the mode of inheritance is autosomal recessive clear all of you so i think this is a very interesting question few points which you need to know that uh, we usually see an associated premature birth there is a generalized glistening tot yellow film you can have stretching of the eyelids ears we have saucer shaped fingers desiccation can occur around the flexures and it usually peels off at around 2 to 4 week the causative agent is <clears throat> non bullous ichthyosis from erythroderma and lamellar ichthyosis and complication is uh, very similar to that of acute skin failure there is loss of water loss of temperature and increased secondary infection so this is how uh, lamellar ichthyosis babies if they survive they appear somewhat like this moving to the next question identify the skin condition shown in this photograph of a newborn <clears throat> uh, anyone marzina pancake dr priya identify the skin condition shown in the image of a newborn ichthyosis vulgaris bathing suit ichthyosis hardly quir ichthyosis or lamellar ichthyosis which of the following is the correct answer of this question <clears throat> very nice pancake dr priya marzina shrishti very well done all my dear students the correct answer of this question is option number anyone 3 Now please look at this image. You can see that there is a thick plaque, plate-like scales which you see in these babies. Here, because of thick scales, you see deep fissures which are present in between these scales. You have a lot of uh, you know deformities which you see, and the survival in these babies is very very poor. So please remember that these babies do not have a good prognosis. They have a very very poor prognosis. Moving to the next question, which gene has been recently linked to pityriasis rubra pilaris? this is also considered to be a disorder of keratinization uh number 2 and number 4 is same let me see uh shrishti what is the confusion number 2 and number 4 yes so identify the condition which shows ba yes bathing suit is a variety of lamellar ichthyosis where the transglutaminase is sensitive to temperature so you can consider 2 and 4 to be related to each other not the same conditions okay amazing now which gene has recently been linked to pityriasis rubra pilaris anyone can tell me the answer i'm waiting for your answers shrishti pancake the answer is card 14 what is pityriasis rubra pilaris it is a condition where you see follicular papules and there are island of sparing this follicular papules give a nutmeg grater like appearance like if you have ever uh, been to kitchen Uh, it is known as kaddu kas in hindi or you can even uh, grate your vegetables with the help of an instrument so that is known as grater so when you touch that you will have a same feeling like when you get it when you touch the patients of pityriasis rubra pilaris so this is known as nutmeg grater uh, appearance and if you notice here that there are few areas of sparing here also this is also very classical Can anybody tell me any other feature which you see very commonly in a patient of pityriasis rubra pilaris, other than the features which I have shown on this image? Anyone? <coughs> uh, what is that image? Pancake. What is that? So you see yellowish discoloration of the palmo plantar skin, and this yellowish discoloration of the palmo plantar skin is known as what? This is known as PRP sandals. This is known as PRP sandals or keratodermic sandals. it appears as if patient is wearing a sandal of yellow color clear amazing all of you let's move to the next the griffith classification is used in psoriasis lichen planus pityriasis rubra pilaris or para psoriasis where do you see the griffith classification 
Where do you see the Griffith classification? Psoriasis, lichen planus, petrasis rubra pilaris, or parasoriasis. Very nice, Pancake, Dr. Priya, Shrishti, Dr. Kostu, amazing all of you. So the correct answer is, again, option number three, that petriasis rubra pilaris, its classical presentation in cephalocaudal arrangement, cephalocaudal. And anything other than this, if the, if the spread of the lesion is other than cephalocaudal, it is known as atypical. Okay, so we have classical variety in adult, classical atypical in adult, <coughs> classical in juvenile and circumscribed in juvenile. Then we have a variety which is known as HIV associated. Okay, let's move to the questions from genodermatosis. Buttonhole sign can be seen in, buttonhole sign can be seen in. Buttonhole sign can be seen in. Anyone can tell me the answer here? Very nice. So again, uh, it is a very classical feature of neurofibromatosis type 1. So what happens when you press the lesions of neurofibromas, they simply dips inside. And why there is a depression which you see, it is because of a defect in the sheet which is present beneath them. So it will give you a very classical appearance like that of a buttonhole. Like if you are wearing a shirt, on one side you have button and on another side you have a buttonhole. If you try to put your finger in that buttonhole, you can easily appreciate that the margins are thick. Same thing happens here also. When you press these dermatofibromas, they will simply dip in and you can feel the margins of the fascia beneath it. Now, what are the features which you see in neurofibromatosis? We have a diagnostic criteria. There is catholimacule, which is more than equals to 6 of size 5 mm in prepubertal and more than 15 mm in adult. More than equals to 2 neurofibromas. Axillary frackling. Can anybody tell me the another name for axillary frackling? What is it called as? I think you all know it is known as Crow's sign. Then we have optic glioma two or more release nodules which are seen in I, I, iris then we have uh, sphenoid bone defects and a positive family history now you can see the first image is that of neurofibromas then we have axillary frackling then we have cafe olimacule and then we have iris release nodules clear all of you so i think it's a very interesting uh, image also and now you know where do you see the buck and hold sign let's move to the next question uh, what is the answer to this question? The ocular condition shown in the image below is associated with. Let me elaborate or let me zoom this image so that you can clearly tell me what exactly this image is. Anyone can tell me what exactly this image is made up of? Some nodules which are present in the eyes and this is what? Yes, this is iris leash nodule. And where do you see iris leash nodule? Shiramya Kostu. It's a feature of neurofibromatosis type 1 amazing all of you now the next question is on your screen a patient had seven irregular hyperpigmented macule on the trunk multiple small hyperpigmented macule on the axilla groin since early childhood there was no other sign or lesion what is the most likely investigation to support the diagnosis first of all you need to know that uh, what is the diagnosis here <coughs> What is the diagnosis, anyone? So I can see a lot of uh, old students today. Kostu, Achan, very nice. And I hope everybody is, you know, uh, studying very hard for this NEET PG 2022. Anyone who have attended the counselling, uh, those who got any rank in NEET PG 2021, anybody here? Shrishti, Achan, Mazina, <coughs> anyone? <coughs> The answer to this question is <clears throat> option number one. And what is the diagnosis? It is neurofibromatosis type 1. Presence of more than equals to 6, that is 7, cafe olimacule. Multiple hyperpigmented macule, that is axillary frackling. Now what next you will do? You will look under the, in, uh, look, uh, under the eye or under the slit lamp for the presence of what? You will see the presence of iris leash nodule so slit lamp examination should be the next step to support the diagnosis 
leech nodule is seen in i think again it's a similar repeat question <coughs> No, very nice all of you I can see a lot of you with the correct answer very well done each and every one of you now uh, I'm again I can see a good number of student uh, students just now and that is why I just want to uh, bring into your notice a very important uh, feature so as uh, we are having the Republic Day on 26 so an Academy is offering a six month subscription for free so I would recommend all of you to please use this code if anybody is interested they can use this code chesta 10 c h e s t a c h e s t a 10 they will get 10 percent discount and they will get six months for free so if they are getting a one year subscription of either plus or even longer subscription the six month would be free please use my code chesta 10 for this okay so as we have many students so i thought of bringing this into your notice very quickly we'll go back to the same question so we are done with this question i guess and we are done with this question let's move to the next question let's move to the next question <clears throat> anyone can tell me the answer The pathognomic sign of neurofibromatosis is cafe olimacule, axillary fraclin, shagreen patch or none of the above. What will be the correct answer? This uh, you should know because it's a frequently asked question. You always think that the pathognomic sign of neurofibromatosis is cafe olimacule but remember it is not true. Please remember it is not true. The characteristic sign is axillary fraclin or the pathognomic sign is axillary fraclin. Is that clear to everyone? Okay, gee. which among the following is false regarding neurofibromatosis? Which is false? <coughs> Anyone? Yes, so the correct answer of this question is. It is an autosomal dominant condition. It is not autosomal recessor. Okay. So the correct answer here is option number two. Now, uh, please tell me the correct answer of this question. Bablu, a four-year-old male presented with history of seizures on examination. We have hypopigmented patch on face, mental retardation. What can be your probable diagnosis? What can be your probable diagnosis? <clears throat> very nice very nice so this is a patient with a history of seizure hypopigmented patch on the face which could be an ash leaf spot or lanceolate hypopigmentation and rental retardation all these features are very classical of tuberous sclerosis now please look at the image each and every one you can see the hypopigmented depigmented patches then we have a shagri patch, tumor on the nail fold, and we have adenoma sebaceum. All these features are very important. Another feature we need to know is we have a lot of major and minor criteria. Other than the four images, we have multiple renal hematomas, cortical dysplasia, subamidomal nodules, giant cell astrocytoma, cardiac rhabdomyoma, and all these features. I just request all of you to please remember them all. I don't want anybody to mark this up, but at least try to remember the features other than what you always remember. So just go through it once. And if you just go through it once, I think it will help you to remember or to solve the questions of the uh, rule out. Like all of the following are the features except. So these questions you might get. Okay, ji? So this is a very characteristic feature. Now, few questions which I have seen is what is the Vogue's triad in tuberous sclerosis? So this is Epi, Loia which is epilepsy and up then we have loss of intelligence loss of intelligence and what is a stands for a stands for adenoma sebaceum this one the angiokeratotic lesions okay which is present on the face or angiofibromatous lesions which is present on the face clear 
good now there is one more question i i think this would be the last question of the today's session can anybody solve this and tell me the correct answer can anyone solve this all are two regarding the tuberous sclerosis except uh, we have five options but only one is incorrect yes the correct answer to this question is that cafe olemacule exclude no please remember cafe olemacule is a very non specific feature it is not a very specific feature to any of the illness and look at this table cafe olemacule can be seen in normal individuals tuberous sclerosis bloom cocaine macule albright and neurofibromatosis type so if something occurs in so many conditions how can that is specific to a particular lesion so correct answer to this question is option that it exclude the diagnosis now thank you all of you for your patience listening i request all of you to please subscribe this youtube channel that is let's crack me pg we also have a telegram group where we give you a lot of links of the classes and the quiz links the name of the telegram group is safe kindly use my code cheshta10 to get an academy subscription and please uh, utilize that uh, republic day uh, feature which i have shown that you have 6 month subscription for free don't forget to press